Good morning, friends and family. It is August 25th, and this is our boring meditation stuff. Today, I wanted to talk about choices. Uh, and the reason for that is because we woke up this morning fairly early, maybe not quite as early as we should have, and we went for a run. And we went for a run, and halfway through the run, some really dark clouds descended over the streets of Jammu. And we were running under these dark clouds, and there were heavy winds, which was quite nice. It was quite cooling, um, because it was quite hot when we woke up, actually. And uh, we managed to run quite a few kilometers before the rains came down. <laughs> and it was really raining big raindrops those like big raindrops that hit you in the face and feel like a small bullet um, and so we ran our last kilometer and a half in heavy rain and then we came home and we got to the ground floor of the building where we stay we stay on the sixth floor and we were about to push the button on the elevator and I actually asked out loud, do we trust the elevator? Whenever it rains, the power goes out. So maybe we should take the stairs because the last thing I want right now, soaking wet, completely soaking wet, dripping. Yeah, the last thing I want is to be stuck in this elevator for however many hours the power decides to be out. We walked up the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, I had this thought, which is how often in our lives do we really have explicit choices like that? Like choose your own adventure kind of choices of like, do you choose option A or do you choose option B? <laughs> and option A has, you know, the cake behind the door and option B has the dragon. Um, These sorts of choices are really the only kind of true choices, concrete, tangible choices. And uh, it's interesting because we often think of ourselves as making a lot of choices throughout the course of the day, sometimes big choices. Where am I going to work? Where am I going to live? Which country am I going to live in these days? Um, and sometimes small choices. Uh, do I have coffee or tea this morning? But if we're honest with ourselves, we don't have to pose the question out loud as I did, but often we're not really making choices. We're just on autopilot. We're just doing the thing that impulsively we want most to do. Uh, these are habits. And this is the... polar opposite of rationality. It's not to say that habits are necessarily a bad thing. There are good habits. If I have a habit of getting up and going for a run, which I don't, it's been seven days since we went for a run. Um, if I have a habit, it's just, this is what I do in the morning. I wake up and I go for a run, even if I don't feel like it, even if I don't want to. I still get up and I go for a run. That's a good habit. It's a good habit to have. Um, no matter how tired I am, I always brush my teeth before I go to sleep. That's a good habit. Um, there is a whole world of behaviors which rely on us being on autopilot. And to a great extent, this is what childhood is all about. Adults teaching children which autopilot preferences are ideal. Eh, actually, don't poop in your pants. Train yourself, <laughs> train yourself not to have that autopilot. Um, choose the autopilot, which involves the fairly complicated interaction of your conscious and unconscious um, voluntary and involuntary nervous system controlling itself such that you choose when and where to poop. 
that's an important autopilot. Um, but there is so much about our life, the things we, we say, the things that we do with our friends, family, coworkers, the people on the internet, strangers, um, that is on autopilot and that we're not really making conscious choices about. And a lot of that autopilot is negative. And these sorts of habit patterns, um, habit patterns is sort of a higher level form of habit, right? If we have a habit of brushing our teeth every night before we go to bed, that's just a regular habit. But a habit pattern is actually this idea that there are deeper habits which have a sort of fractal relationship with themselves. So, for instance, anger. If I happen to be the sort of person who gets angry often, getting angry encourages that habit. So when I get angry, I'm more likely to get angry the next time. And then when I get angry again, I'm again more likely to get angry the next time. Um, these sorts of habit patterns are uh, a form of kind of deeply ingrained autopilot that are really at the heart of meditation. What we're trying to do is break the habit patterns. We don't necessarily want to destroy them all. The goal is not to be without habits and habit patterns. The goal is to shift from unhealthy, negative habit patterns to healthy, positive habit patterns. So instead of getting angry all the time, the goal is to respond with compassion and intelligence, <laughs> to think before we respond with an emotion. Um, and that's very difficult to do, but that is actually the goal of meditation. And um, if, you, if you practice anapana in earnest, you may begin to see the early stages of this sort of change happening in yourself. And so I would continue, I would continue to encourage you to continue practicing anapana to try to find a routine for yourself, like brushing your teeth. It becomes a habit, <laughs> a habit for changing habit patterns. I, uh, I realize that the discussion of, of rationality is a bit risky, right? Because then there's all these arguments about like, oh, human beings aren't rational. And it's kind of a, it's an interesting consequence of being a semi-rational being. We're not completely irrational. We're not just slogging away on some sort of um, brainless algorithm. We can't think. Um, but it's this interesting consequence that we can say to ourselves rationally, we are irrational. Our behaviors seem to be irrational. Um, but, uh, we should, we shouldn't take that as some sort of like nihilistic defeatist, uh, sort of thing that, oh, most, most of my behaviors are actually irrational. Well, yeah, many of them are perhaps most, um, and that's okay but we should find our way toward the tools that help us deal with that fact so that we can change even those irrational behaviors using, paradoxically, rationality. All right, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is healthy. I hope everyone's taking care of themselves and taking care of the folks around them. I will talk to you all tomorrow. Good night.